times, God gave David victory over the lion and the bear. Now here you have just a little teenager keeping his father's sheep. But while he's there, the lion comes and he kills the lion. The bear comes and he kills the bear. And he's just keeping sheep. And nobody made nothing of it. All right, all right. And you may be used of God to do something significant, and nobody makes anything of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, you think it's a pretty good deal. You know, you kill a lion yourself. Yeah. All right, now. <laughs> and the bear, no, you know, the rest of the bears say, don't go there. All right. He's a bear killer. <laughs> you know, you, you feel pretty good about it. But nobody makes any noise. All right, all right. And then he gets an assignment to go from his dad. His dad say, hey, go check on your brothers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he goes to check on his brothers. And now his brothers who are considered valiant men, mm -hmm. they are men of war. Yeah, These are yeah. men who are trained in Saul's army. These are men who can wield a sword, okay. know how to use their spear, mm -hmm. know how to use their shield. They know how to fight. But they're all gathered together, and on the other side, there is this Philistine called the lion mm -hmm. and the Philistines, that army. All right. And they say, hey, all we have to do is get one of y'all to fight our champion, bring your champion to fight our champion, and whoever wins, they're the ones who won the war, so to speak. Yeah, Everybody yeah, don't have yeah, to die. Yeah, we just okay. let one of them die, the rest of us can live. Sounds like a pretty good deal on both sides. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Problem though was, on the other side, mm -hmm. their champion was big. Uh -huh. On Israel's side, all of them were about the same size. All right, all right. And they wasn't tall as the one on the other side. Right. So, so now, they're shaking in their boots. Mm. But this little boy David comes up. It's amazing what my name is. But what's going on? Okay, hold on. Hold on. He just he just showed up. And uh, he's hearing and witnessing what's going on. And, and he says, Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he would dare to defy the army of the living God? All right now. Now, David's brothers are like, what you doing out here anyway? <laughs> You just coming out here to see what's going on. It's like you just trying to be nosy. But David said, is there not a cause? All right, all right. Is there not a cause for somebody to stand up? Amen. Is there not a cause for somebody to be so troubled by what's going on that they willing to do something about it? Jesus. All y'all ain't willing to do nothing, but I don't like this. Jesus, Jesus. All right. And so they're asking, who's going to fight us? And David said, I'll fight you. And so Saul and his men, they say, like, wait a minute, okay, you gonna fight? Okay. They were so glad to get somebody. Because nobody wanted to go. Hello, somebody. Let me just put a pin there. Leaders lead. Are you hearing? Leaders do what? Leaders lead. Everyone in here is a leader. You're not gonna be a leader. You're already a leader. And leaders lead. Yes. So what does that mean? You gotta leave the crowd or the pack. You gotta step out. Amen. Now some folk are gonna think all kinds of things, but you need to know who you are and whose you are. Amen. Amen. All right. So so anyway, they tell David, okay, if you're gonna fight, cool. Let's let's get you ready for war. So they start dressing him up in all of them. Uh, uh, armament, the warrior attire, and all that kind of stuff, getting him so he can look real uh, warrior-like. Because you know, he came up there, he didn't look like he's supposed to be on the battlefield. All right, all right. No, no, looked like he's supposed to be on the backside of the mountain where he was. But uh, David tried all this stuff on, and, and he said, I haven't proved this, or I'm not operating with this before. And you need to know that there's a grace on your life, and if you operate in your grace, yes, you'll right. function better than trying to operate in somebody else's yes. grace. Yes. Is this making sense to anybody? Yes. Are you all receiving this word to yes. your yes. life today? So, so David said, I can't, I can't wear this stuff. So he takes all the stuff off, 
And he gives him five smooth stones, the Bible says. That's right. And he tells Goliath, he says, the Lord is going to bring you down, and I'm going to take your head off. All right, now. All right. So now, Goliath is laughing. Mm -hmm. The Philistines are laughing. Yes. Israel's shaking in their boots because they think David's about to get whipped, and we're going to be in service to you. No, 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 no. They, they, they're not glad about this battle. That's right. You understand? Mm -hmm. They're glad somebody else is going, because that means that person who goes, their thought is, that person's going to die. So it's like, it wasn't me. Amen. You know, it wasn't them dying. Mm -hmm. We just be a servant to, but at least we'd be alive. Right. So, so, David takes a stone, and you got to know there's times when you got to face your enemy head on. Amen. Dude, you don't have to wait for the enemy. You get attacked. That's right. Have you That's noticed? Right. That all of the armament that's spoken of in Ephesians, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the shield of faith, the sword of the spirit, the, uh, uh, the, the belt of, of truth, the feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, none of this stuff covers your back. It all covers your front. That's because you're not supposed to be tucking tail running. You're supposed to be facing your enemy. Hello, somebody. Look at your neighbors that don't be a chicken. Don't be a chicken. Because chickens don't fly. <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. Bible tells us, that, and Isaiah says, uh, if we wait on the Lord, yeah. we shall run and not be weary. Yeah. We shall walk and not faint. Hello, somebody. Yeah. Amen. It, it also tells us that we shall mount up with wings as eagles. Right? Amen. So, so if you want to fly, you can't be a chicken. That's right. They don't do good in flying. No, they hop up, but they soon come down. Okay, okay, that's enough of the chicken story. Okay, so now, so now, uh, David runs and charges Goliath, but remember, he's been practicing on the backside of the mountain. He's gotten to be a sharpshooter, throwing stones in his little sling. And he winds that thing up, and God carries that stone, catches the Philistine, Goliath, in his forehead, uh -huh. knocks him down, yeah. and David comes and cut his head off. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. Yeah, that's what the word says. Yeah. It never would have happened Amen. if David didn't do well behind the mountain. That's right. It, it never would have done well. It never would have been a favorable end right. if he wasn't faithful and what he was called to do when he was behind the mountain. But let's see, let's see what else happens in this biblical account. Right. Once Goliath is slain and, and David is accredited as the man that slayed him, all of a sudden he comes from behind the mountain and now he's displayed in front of everybody. But he was developed behind the mountain. God is developing us right now. There are some folk that don't see, don't know, don't understand, but God is developing us right now. And there's a day coming and it's not far away. But we're going to be coming, coming from behind the mountain and God's going to display us. But he's been developing us long before we got to where we're going. Are you hearing? Yes. So then David gets displayed. Now everybody is singing David's praise. Look at your neighbor and say, young is not bad. Young is not bad. <laughs> you, you see, David was younger than the men of Saul's army. But he still was the one they looked up to once he killed the lion. You see, because somebody says not the size of the dog, it's the size of the fight in the dog. All right. <laughs> no, no, no. Years ago, years ago, I'll tell y'all this story. Years ago, I used to fish a lot for, for fish, the scaly things with fins. All right. I don't do so much of that now. My fishing now is more for souls. I want folks to know Jesus. That's, that's what my heart really is now. But I used to like going to the water and fishing. All right? And uh, one day I'm out on Manitou Road, and, and as I'm driving, I see this turtle. You know, it's mating season for the turtle, and the big old turtle. I'm going to get me a turtle. 
<laughs> it makes it All right, now, yeah. <laughs> so, I, you know, I done passed him, and I came back and, and parked, and I'm going to get him. I'm going to get him. I'm going to put him in the van. I had a van at the time. I'm going to put him in the van, and uh, when I get him home, you know, I'm going to change his mind. He won't think the same no more. I'm going to That's a translation. That's a translation. But as I go for the turtle, uh -huh. the turtle start coming at me. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm walking up on the turtle, and he start coming to me. <laughs> right. I'm going to tell you, I was not expecting the turtle. <laughs> the face this big dude here, you understand know what I'm saying? I'm expecting this turtle to try to turn and try to run, and I'm going to catch him. But this turtle, he must not have read the script. Because he did not turn at all. He looked at me as I'm like, <sighs> and so I'm thinking, okay. So I'm, I'm going to check him. Is he bluffing or what? So I come up the wall, and he, <sighs> Okay, he's not blood. <laughs> so I figured, okay, let me find something. Uh -uh. So I tried to find something. I got a stick. And I figured I'll take the stick and I'm going to get him going at the stick. I'll find him and grab it. But he wouldn't pay a stick, no attention. Uh -huh. <laughs> he was just looking at me. <laughs> so wisdom spoke to me. Uh -huh. <laughs> and wisdom asked me a question. said, what if you get him in the van? And while you driving, he come and bite you on your Achilles tendon. <laughs> oh man, I'm oh I don't ooh, that don't look like a good picture in my mind. So long story short, I just decided I didn't need that turtle. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh yeah, I got a revelation. All right. I, I didn't need that turtle. I even wanted that bad. <laughs> and so that turtle got to going across the street into the weeds. And whatever his plans was for the day, he got to live on. <laughs> Why? Because he got some fighting. That's right, that's right. The devil don't mind pushing you if you don't push back. Yes. All right, yes, all right. right. Are you hearing? Yes. Amen. You push back by faith. Right. You push back by the word of God. Is this making sense to anybody? Amen. Are you all receiving this? Right. So even though things look all out of balance, it looks jacked up, it looks bad, it looks dreary and, and dim and all that kind of stuff, you got to have some faith to believe that I don't care what it looks like, God is still God, and God is able to turn this situation around. Amen. Sometimes it just looks worse than it actually is. Amen. Amen. It is so. Yes. yes. So I can't live in fear Amen. of once the 21 day fast is gone, something bad's going to happen. Amen. No, no, no. Some good stuff going to happen concerning me and mine. Amen. Which includes you. Amen. Oh, you understand? Y'all call me your pastor, right? Amen. Amen. Well, I'm telling you now, I call you my member. Amen. Now, I know you really belong to God. You don't belong to me. Amen. All right? So, my calling you my members is a phrase of endearment. I understand who ownership belongs Amen. to. That belongs, you belong to God, just Amen. like I do. Does that make sense to you? It does. So then let, let's, 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 just, let's, let's just see the rest of this. <coughs> so now, your assignment is directly connected to the challenges you will face. Amen. Because of where God was going to take David, he had to face a giant. Amen. 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 It wasn't somebody his size. It was somebody bigger than him. But they weren't bigger than his God. Amen. And you've got to know today, in your own personal situation, Amen. Amen. that no matter what comes, it's not bigger than your God. Amen. That's right. That's right. You've got to declare your victory. Amen. You gotta declare your success. Amen. You gotta declare your prosperity. Jesus, Are you hearing? Jesus. You can be broke and only have two good quarters to rub together, but you still need to declare, I'm blessed of the Lord. Amen. The Lord takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. Amen. Amen. It's Amen. good. God's goodwill and pleasure to give you the kingdom, the Bible lets us know. 
So even though you say, I don't have an apartment, I don't have a house, I don't have a car, I don't have a job, I don't have a bank account or anything to put in. You still need to declare, I live in an overflow. Amen. 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 The blessings of the Lord make us rich and he added no sorrow with it. Hello, somebody. Amen. It is so. Amen. It is so. So, see, I'm not surprised. I already know that I'm going to move regionally, nationally, and internationally. All right. My assignment dict dictates it. All right. You all haven't known this, but I think it's over a year now. Every morning or every day, I have in my, on, in my office, I have two maps of the world mm. on my closet door. And they, they slide and roll. You know. And every morning I lay my hand on the map. And I call souls into the kingdom from every nation, every village, every hamlet, every tongue, every day. Sometimes multiple times a day. I'm believing God for over 228 million souls to come to Christ globally. You say, well, wait a minute, Bishop. How you going to do that? You had a church and you don't even have a hundred folk in it. It ain't about me. God's got to do it. Amen. But he's going to need somebody. Amen. Hello? Yes, Lord. So I'm calling them in now. Amen. I'm declaring it now. Amen. It's no hard thing for God. It's just hard for us. Amen. They say the earth is populated by over 7.5 billion people. A billion is a thousand million. There's over 7,000 or 7,500,000 million people in the world. What is 28 million? It's only a small portion. Amen. It's less than 3% of the global population. The Bible said all things are possible to him that believeth. How much can you believe for? Let me tell you, it takes the same faith process to believe for one soul to come to Christ as it does for one million to come to Amen. Christ. Amen. What are you expecting? Amen. What are you expecting? The God I serve, he's God of the whole everything. I mean, every universe, every solar system. He's God of everything. So to me, it may be big, but to him, it's a small matter. Amen. Amen. Bible tells me, Ephesians 3.20 says, Now unto him that's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that worketh in you. What's working in you? When you think about your business, what's working in you? Can you believe God that God can give you an increased idea to cause a business to come out of you and be yes. successful? Yes, Lord. Thank you. Can you believe that God can rescue your marriage? Do you believe God can heal your body from the infirmity that challenges you? Yes, Lord. What is your faith? Yes, Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Yeah, I can't afford to get shook by that stuff. That's right. You see, because God alone is the giver and the sustainer of life. Yes, yes. 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 My father-in-law, the one who God used to pioneer this work, had sugar diabetes. Mm -hmm. And his sugar had caused amputation of toes and in the foot and in the leg. Then later, the other leg would get infected. They would do amputations there of half the foot, and then they were going to have to cut off part of the leg. And he was in the hospital. They had, they had cut off the other leg. He was in the hospital. I was over at, at that time, we were over on the northeast side of the city. And I was at the church, out in the yard, cleaning. In fact, Deacon Cunningham was with me. And, um, they said, they said, came to the church, they said, hey, they said, uh, some of his children, Minister Lane came by the church. She said, dad is in the hospital and he's talking out of his head. Mm -hmm. Saying what? She said, yeah, say, he says his foot is hurting and he don't have no foot. Mm -hmm. And I, I, you know, I understood it because yeah. I know about phantom pain. Yeah, yeah. There's, a, there's a real phenomenon 
where a person would have an amputation of a certain body part, mm -hmm. they feel the sensations of pain or other sensations of that body part, though it's no longer connected to them. And so she said he had phantom pain. Well, uh, I understood about that, and I, I knew he wasn't talking out of his head, but to her, that was crazy talk, because he didn't have no foot to hurt. All right. All right. And the Holy Spirit told me, while we were out in the yard, mm -hmm. he told me, when I see Rev that day, that was going to be my last time seeing him. And I didn't want to go to the hospital. Because my father and I, father-in-law and I, we were like this. We were real good friends. He was like my best friend on this side of heaven. Apart from my wife, you know. That was like my best friend. And um, I didn't want to go see him because the Holy Spirit told me. When I go see him that time, that was going to be my last time seeing him alive. So Deacon and I, we stayed out in the yard cleaning. It was a vacant lot and we were applying to get that lot so we could expand the church all that kind of stuff. And uh, then, you know, but I had to go. That's that's my heart. You know, I want to be there. You know, how do you, how do the pastor not go? Amen. Amen. He's asking for me too. Amen. So, you know, I went. And when I got in, we would call, we referred to each other as Red. So when he seen me, he said, hey, Rev. I said, how you doing, Rev? And he said, he said, I'm glad you're here. He said, I've been in so much pain. He said, I I've been praying. He said, but when you're in a lot of pain, it's hard to get in earnest with the Lord. And he said, I just want you to pray for me. And so, you know, I'm standing by the bedside, and I laid hands on him and prayed for him. And the Lord just removed his pain just like that. When I got done praying, he, he felt so much better. And so now we're laughing and talking around the bed. Some of my sister-in-laws are there. My wife is there. We laughing and talking and having a, quite a time. And, and we talked about when he had phantom pain one time before. And he had us laughing. He said one time his foot was itching. He said it was tearing up. And uh, it was on the leg that had been amputated first. All right. And he said, uh, while his, his leg was, his foot was itching, but he had that artificial leg on, he took the leg off, took the shoe off the foot, scratched, and he said he felt so much better. <laughs> <laughs> we cracked up. Yeah, we did what y'all are doing. We, we broke out of feet. Nobody expected that, right? So we all laughing because he said that was a good family. So we're laughing around the bed and all, and, and then in a little while, he said, Rev, he said, he said, I think you're going to have to pray again. Yeah. He said, because the pain has come back. Okay. He, you know, would, you, would you pray for me? Mm -hmm. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me. And this is what he said. He said, the first time I took the pain away from him. Mm -hmm. He said, but this time, I'm going to take him away from the pain. Jesus, and I did Jesus. not want to pray. Jesus, Jesus. I did not want to pray because I knew once I prayed, Jesus. it wasn't long, he was going to be out. Amen. I knew it. I knew it. Right. And so I just kind of within muttered a prayer. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't just come on out and pray. Jesus. And in a little while, he's laying on his bed. In a little while, he, he looks up toward the ceiling and his hand goes up like this. And I said, Rev, you all right? Rev, Rev. And he's, his eyes are fixed That's toward right. the ceiling. It right. looks like his eyes, is like he's straining, looking like in the blood vessels in his eyes, like he's yeah. straining. Yeah. And, yeah. and at the time, I was still with the fire department, and we would always do the ABCs, you know, check the vitals and all. And I, I reached, I checked his pulse, and he doesn't have a pulse. Yeah. So I told him, I said, he's having a heart attack. Get the nurse. He's having a heart attack. He said, what? I said, get the nurse. He's having a heart attack. And so they went to get the nurse. I said, get an elbow bag. And he said, what? And, and when the nurse came in, I said, he's having a heart attack. He needs an elbow bag. She said, what? I said, he needs an elbow bag. Oh, y'all yeah, yeah, move out. So she rushed us all out. <clears throat> a little while later, she said, get an elbow bag. <laughs> <laughs> but it wouldn't matter. It didn't matter if he was in the hospital when it's time to go, you go. All right, all right. 
You understand? So understanding that the giver and the sustainer of life alone is God. That's right. It's God. So even though you may be there with all the medical professionals and they have all the equipment, they can't keep you alive if God say the time is up. That's right. And the devil can't kill you if God say live. All right now. Are you here? Amen. There's folk who've been shot in the head and everywhere else, done jumped off bridges, been in the worst accidents, been burnt, had all kinds of things happen to them, and medical science can't figure out how they survive. Yeah, yeah. Amen. So when God say live, the devil can't make you die. Amen. Are you understanding? Amen. It is so. Amen. And so what I trust that we're doing at this time of consecration, I trust that we're drawing into God more. Amen. We're not going to be the folk on the periphery of a relationship with the Lord. Amen. You know, there's some of us got neighbors. We know them because we wave at them. We see them go in and out the house. We wave at them. Amen. But that's a peripheral kind of relationship. Mm -hmm. You don't really know them. Most times you don't even know their name. You just see them. <laughs> Have a nice day. Right? And if we're not careful, that's how we'll allow our relationship to be with the Lord. But that's not the relationship that God is calling for. Amen. God is calling for intimacy Amen. in our relationship with Him. God is calling for us to love Him and know Him so much until our heart grieves for what his heart grieves for. Amen. And our heart rejoices in the things his heart rejoices in. It is so. And he can't make you love him. You have to make you love him. Somebody, that was a good place for me, man. Amen. Glad I could help you with that. Amen. <laughs> No, no, you have to make him make you love him. And I'll tell you how I mean that, and I'll tell you why it's so. How I mean that is God has given all of us this free will, and because he has, he cannot and will not violate that. You say, but he's God, he can make us love him. Well, no, he can't, because he made us like him. We have to choose. Are you with me? Amen. Amen. No matter who you love or what you love, you love by choice. Amen. Whoever it is and or whatever it is, you love it by choice or you love them by choice. Yeah. You choose to direct your affections toward that person or that person. Amen. Nobody makes you do that. Amen. And if we're going to draw into God, we have got to choose to direct our affections toward God. Amen. Hello? Yes. There's a whole lot of stuff we have embraced over our lives. I'm, I'm looking around the room and I, I don't think I can find one, but maybe one in here. Well, okay, I'll find a few that's under 18. Mm -hmm. So the rest of y'all, y'all been around a little while. <laughs> and some of us have been around a little while longer than that. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Amen. Well, during those course, the course of those years, we have directed our affection toward different persons and different things. Some things we've directed our affection toward has not been in our best interest. All right, all right. Thank God for those who kind of woke up and say, I can't keep doing that. I need to do something different. Yeah. But for those of you who haven't woken, uh, awakened yet, I won't tell you, you still got time. Because the blood's still running warm in your veins. But you choose to direct your affection. So if we're going to love God, we're not going to love God by accident. We're going to love God by choice. Amen. Amen. Now, now there are some that believe you really love God by force, too. Because, like, God, you know, uh, uh, some folks will say, well, you know, um, I wasn't doing what God wanted me to do. I knew he wanted me to do something, but I wouldn't do it. And so then, it's like he slammed me down on the ground, kicked me, beat me up and stuff. And I said, okay, God, I'll, I'll serve you. I'll love you. Yeah. 
Jesus. That's not how it happened. You know, you heard somebody say, we put me on my bed of affliction. All right, all right. He did. Stop lying, God. All right. <laughs> just, just stop it. But, but sometimes folks are speaking out of ignorance. They don't know better. They think that's what happened, that God roughed them up. Right. It's, it's like, you know, with the mob, it's like, you know, you don't pay the money. They come break two fingers, you know, you better get that money. Otherwise, you won't be around. All right. you walk around, can't hold yeah, yeah, yeah. nothing, but you go get that <laughs> Maybe that wasn't a good one. But anyway, yeah. um, that's not how God draws to him. Amen. All right? What happens, you need to know, you need to know, that when things are well with you, it's only because God has set a hedge of protection around you Amen. that the devil cannot do to you the stuff he wants to. Amen. Because any second Amen. of any day, Amen. there's tragedy awaiting every one of us. Amen. Every one of us. Amen. It's like the guy that was coming down Ridgeway Avenue, and he didn't know this, but uh, in that area, y'all know where Kodak is. Uh -huh. Well... <laughs> It's underneath, there's almost like a whole city underneath the ground. Uh, right. Trains and everything run under there. I mean, all kinds of stuff happened under the ground. Amen. Amen. There was a fire in the manhole. The manhole cover weighed about 300 pounds. Well, the explosion shot the manhole cover way up in the sky. Mm -hmm. He's driving as he comes down. That 300-pound thing comes on his car and kills him. Yeah. Who would have ever thought? Who would have ever imagined? Who could have ever uh, timed it out so precisely as for him to come at that exact moment, the thing come down and hit and kill him with that kind of precision? All Nobody. Right. Amen. God wanted him. God if, 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 listen, if it wasn't for God watching over every one of us, all the stuff that we have heard about happening to others, it could have been our story. All right now. Yes. 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 It yes. could have been our story. Yes. But the Lord seemed fit to allow our moments to roll on a little while longer. Amen. Are you hearing? Right. And all of us going to leave one day no matter how it ends. So whether it's a man old cover, it's a fire, a mistaken identity, an accident, a dreaded disease, doesn't matter. Or just sleep away. We're all going to leave, so to me, that's not the tragedy at all. That just happened to all men. The Bible says appointed unto man wants to die, and after that, the judgment. Amen. So we're going to die, so no need to fear death. Amen. I'm not telling you be foolish and go, shoot me, shoot me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm not, I'm not advocating that at all. But what I am saying is we should not fear death. We should recognize that death is you know, a very real possibility or reality, one day we will meet it, and we just want to meet it right. Amen. And because we don't know what day it's going to be, it's Amen. best to be ready today, because tomorrow Amen. may not show up. Amen. 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 So, so this time of consecration is real. It's real. Amen. It's real. I don't know how many of you have been reading your Bibles, if you've been reading your Bible, just wave at it. If you haven't been reading, you don't have to wave. Okay. All right. All right. No, 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 no. No, no shame. No shame. You see, if you haven't been, you still got opportunity to start. We, we, we're not trying to cast some, some, you know, shadow or throw some mud on somebody like, you know, something. No, 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 no. We all just want to do better. That's true. That's it. Because some of them that been reading, they ain't caught up. Actually, some of them falling further behind. Well, but I, but I did read. I only read one day, and I only had one verse. But he just asked, "Who did some reading?" <laughs> Amen. Um, but I want to remind you that it's really about more intimacy with the Lord, getting yes, to hear and recognize His voice, and then to obey. Amen. All right. So what we're going to do, our time's getting tight. We're not going to have our communion today. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to pray. Amen. Pray for the cold. I Amen. need you to cover me and my family. Let me, let me just share this with you before I pray. Or before we pray. Uh, and I'm going to stand, my, my son and I, we're going to stand in proxy for our entire family. Amen. Okay, Amen. so Amen. I'm going to have you all at that time come and circle us and pray for us. Amen. Right. Now, 
this, when we come and pray, this is not about, okay, you teach the word, you preach the word and all that. That's, no. that's not what this is about. This is about you and I petitioning God Amen. on behalf of your pastor, his wife, the first family, and everybody connected to us. Yeah. Let yeah. me encourage you and remind you that you're connected to us. Yeah. Amen. Okay? So now, it's not surprising to me that these things are happening because of the major kingdom assignment. Amen. It's, it's just not surprising at all. In fact, you know, I'm, I'm starting to get different calls to come and to teach or preach uh, various places. Folks that have never called me before are starting to call. Now, right here, next month, actually, out in East Rochester, Deep Wells. They have me as the morning keynote speaker. This is Deep Wells Parenting Conference. Saturday, March 10th, 9 to 3 p.m. at Coinening of Fellowship, which is in East Rochester. It's $10 per individual, $15 a couple. You can register online at parentingconference.org. Now, I would love as many of Ark of Jesus Ministries as can and will to go with me for this parenting conference. Now, just let me tell you a little bit about it. Now, this parenting conference, you know why they have me here? The, the one who invited me said, because of what you've been through. We know that you lost a son. You know what that experience is like. We want you to come and help parents who are dealing with different things with their children. All right? So now I was telling you that I was telling you that David developed on the back side of the mountain. All right? So anyway, there's a flyer out there and then there's some of these that we'll have around that you can you can get that talks a little bit about the conference, conference speakers and all. Yesterday, my son and I, we're coming to the leadership meeting here. And I get a call from Ron Domina, who is the former pastor of Bethel Christian Fellowship on East Avenue. Amen. And, and Ron is asking me, will I speak at this gathering where he covers a number of pastors from around the area. And in fact, Raphael, I'm going to ask you to go with me if you're available. Um, now, uh, Pastors come from Batavia, mm -hmm. Albion, Churchville, all around. Amen. And he says, you know, you you lost a son. Jesus, Jesus. And, you know, what can the church do for people who have that kind of experience? Jesus, Jesus. And you've been doing a number of things around the city. All right. You've led the National Day of Prayer and You've done different things, and we want you to come and share with these leaders. So I'm going to be talking with pastors and leaders now. All right. All right. All right. Amen. Well, I know God put a treasure in me. It's not just for me. All right. It's a treasure he want to draw out of me to enrich other lives by. Amen. The treasure never would have been there if I didn't have the experience that I had. All right. you got to understand that your ups and downs have value. You gotta understand that God's got a bigger plan than the tears that may have come on your face going through your stuff. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Sleepless nights you had. You gotta understand there's value to that stuff. Amen. Anybody receiving this word to your life? Right? Yes, Lord. Oh yes. It's value to it. All the ups and downs you've been through. There's value. So you don't want to cast that stuff aside because that will make you unique. Amen. Amen. It separates you from the crowd. Nobody else can tell your story like you can tell your story. Amen. Nobody. Amen. Of all the seven plus billion people on the earth, not one can tell your story like you can tell your story. Amen. That speaks to the uniqueness, the specificity of God concerning your life. My God. 
And so, so because of this major kingdom assignment, and see, I'm not going to be here at the church as much as I used to. I'm not going to be able to. I'm not going to be teaching Bible study as much. God has blessed me with capable people who love him. They love the people. They're going to be ministering the word of God to you. So part of the maturity that show up in you is, even though the bishop's not there, you're here. Ain't like, well, Bishop ain't there. This is my day off, too. <laughs> no, 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 no. Thank you. I ain't even off. I'm on assignment. You make it off. So you ain't even matching me. <laughs> Are you hearing? So the sign of your maturity is I don't need the man altogether. I need to be in line with God in this matter. And if I align with God, I'm going to do what I'm supposed to do. I'm going to be where I'm supposed to be. And God's going to be glorified with me. Me, whoever me is, you put your name on me. All right? So, you know, there's times when I'm just not going to be here. Uh, I'm going to take more vacation. I'm telling y'all now. So right. nobody act brand new when I ain't around. When I was with the fire department, I had eight weeks of vacation. All right? Now... I was only with the fire department for 22 years. Mm -hmm. Let me see, what's eight weeks? I had five weeks plus the extra three trips. Yeah, okay, actually it's more than that. So now, I was with them 22 years. Mm -hmm. Now, I done been with the company here 36 years. Mm -hmm. All right, all right. And, and I ain't been taking hardly any time all right, now. at all. So I know I got at least about two and a half years I can take off right here and still be good. Oh yeah, I got some time in the bank. Hello, somebody. No, but for all that God has allowed me to do and stirred me to do, you must understand it all takes time. You know, I, I, I've been up since four something this morning working, getting ready for this service. Most of y'all, y'all were just turning over the ship gear. Right? Amen. Y'all know you went to bed late? No, you went to bed late too. No, I didn't go to bed. Oh, you didn't? I, I didn't go to bed. Yeah. Yeah, you went to bed late. Oh, yeah, I went to bed late. <laughs> no, but but you, you, you just don't know all that people put in. Um, all right. Oh, man, we get, we get ready for it. Some of y'all know about Michael Jordan. What a, what a group that know about Michael Jordan? Amen. Okay, okay. Then I need some. I need some new group. How about LeBron James? Scotty Pippen, all them folks. Curry. Okay, okay, okay. That's it. That's it. So, so, so now, so now, uh, he brings some football up in here. Okay, cool, cool. We we go with all the sports. Let's let's get uh. Get, yeah, only five years. Well, praise the Lord. Praise God. I've been over 50. Amen. Um, so, so, so now, uh, um, you know, we can walk on down the line about different uh, sports personalities who's at the top of their game. Uh -huh. All right? None of them are at the top of their game because they deal with everybody else did. All right. Now, that's true. They went above and beyond what others were doing. Are you hearing? Martha Jordan used to sleep with his basketball. He woke up with his basketball. He go through the house with his basketball. He couldn't leave his basketball alone. You got to know today the assignment God has on your life. You don't have time to pick flowers by the wayside and do what everybody else is doing. Not if you want to go where he wants to take you. Amen. It comes with a cost. Yes, yes, it does. There are some sacrifices that got to be made. Amen. But it pays off. Amen. Do you know that, that Michael Jordan was denied from his high, ball, high, high school basketball team? They felt like he couldn't play good enough. Mm, all right. Do you know that Walt Disney, they, they wouldn't even give him the time of day with what he was doing. All right. But then later, later, look at your neighbor and say, this is for you right now. <laughs> Say, don't tell yourself no. no. Amen. I don't care who tells you no. You need to be saying yes. yes so you go to the bank for the loan and they tell you no, but you still need to have a yes on your 
protest. You're going to go out and find another bank because somebody got a yes for you. You're looking for a job and they say, no, we're not hired. You need to know there's a yes out there for me somewhere. You may not have it, but that don't mean there's not one for me. Jesus. It is so. Now, I didn't plan to go this way today, but I did plan to go this way. Let me explain that. I know what he just said. He just contradicted himself. No, he didn't. Okay, let me explain. I didn't plan to go this way, meaning to deal with the message and the context that we're dealing with it now. But I meant to go this way, which means I meant to follow the Holy Spirit. All right? And to me, he knows what needs to be said much better than I do. All right? Amen. Your consecration shows up also in your giving. That's right. In, 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 and let me deal with this before y'all pray. Y'all ready to pray? Amen. Don't get quiet now. Say, y'all ready to pray? Amen. Speak up. Y'all ready to pray for real? Amen. <laughs> okay, thank you, ready to pray. All right. This. Consecration draws manifestation. The scripture, our theme passage is here. Matthew 6, 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. The pledge, and I hope you all fill out this pledge before you leave. The pledge says that I pledge to consecrate also in the area of ministry, of an area of ministry involvement, at least once a month, twice a month, or once a week. All right. This is everybody need to be involved in the life of the church. Amen. Just coming on Sunday is good, but God wants more. Amen. God is do more. Amen. Are you with me? Yeah. So then, what are the areas of the pledge? One is to pray regularly for Bishop Singleton, Lady Dawn, and the first family. Right. Number two, to pray, or number three on your thing, to pray regularly for my family, that's your family, and your church family. Number four, to invite people to church more regularly this year. How many won't want to see the house running over where it's standing room only? Amen. 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 Well, then we need to invite folks, right? Amen. If you invite them, I believe God's going to call some of them to respond favorably to your invite. Right. Number five, to be a faithful tither and giver. Amen. Amen. Your heart is reflected in your giving. Amen. The Bible says this, where a man treasure is, there will his heart be also. Amen. Anybody that don't give money in the church, their heart is not with that ministry. Right. If they have money and they don't give, their heart is not with that ministry. Right. You can always tell a person's heart, just follow the wallet. Amen. Whatever's important to a person, they will to spend money on. Right. Amen. 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 How many of y'all buy food? Amen. Okay. That must be important to you. Okay. So some of the areas. You can assist Bishop, uh, assist Lady Singleton. Amen. The Bible Club, Raphael, is here. Raphael is, what, 88 years old? 88 years old. And he's been faithful with that Bible Club. You can volunteer for once a month, just once a month, for about an hour and 15 minutes, and be a big help to your church ministry. Amen. Just, just one time a month. Or you say, well, I could do that once a week if it's only an hour and 15 minutes. And if you look on the other side, it tells you what the time block is. Uh, the Celebration of Life Connection meeting, the children and or youth ministry, the finance team. Now, if you're going to be on the finance team, you've got to be a faithful tither. Amen. And you've got to be a member of the church. You say, why you got to be a faithful tither? Because the Bible says people that don't pay tithes are robbers. And they curse with a curse. I don't want to curse people messing with church money. That's right. That's right. That's so I'm just plain and simple with y'all. I, I might as well keep it real with you. No, if you ain't going to pay your tithe, you of you the Bible say you're a robber. And you might start stealing the little money we get. Amen. Amen. If you if you rob God, then it don't surprise me if you wouldn't rob his house. Amen. <laughs> 
In fact, if somebody's sitting next to you and they're not outside, you probably better hold on to your purse anyway. <laughs> Just thought I'd throw that in. Okay, parking, ministry, security, setup, tech team. I need some techies. I need some folk who like technology. They like computers and they like sound systems and they like cameras and all that stuff because we got some things to do and I need some folk who like that area. It doesn't matter that you don't really know it, you can learn it. But I need somebody who at least like it. Amen. 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 Uh, the temple care, helping to keep the house clean. We got another service here at 3 o'clock. Amen. Everybody ought to be part of temple care. Help straighten the chair up on your roll. Pick up a piece of paper you see. Amen. Amen. Don't talk about, well, you know, we leave that for the janitor. The devil is alive. You got to walk over and leave for the janitor. Pick the thing up. Amen. Okay. Uh, our mission department, uh, youth ministry, and other. There may be something else you're interested in. Put your name on it. Amen. You can fill it out uh, and turn it in. I'm just going to remind you. That this is really about service to God. You, you got to understand the Bible says do all as unto the Lord. If you think you just signing on with the praise and worship leader. You just signing on with uh, the youth minister. Or you just signing on with the deacon. You have totally missed what this is all about. This is really about God. I'm giving up my time, my abilities, my resources to your honor and glory. Amen. And you need to be faithful whatever you're serving. Amen. So if you're in the choir, you're supposed to be at choir rehearsal and not late. Thank you. Amen. Mm -hmm. Same thing go for the praise team. You usher, you're supposed to be in usher attire, whatever you're supposed to be on duty. Amen. 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 I don't care if it ain't but once a month. Come ready. If you every week, come ready. Amen. Amen. No, when I was on the fire department, I couldn't just show up in this suit. And I made this pretty nice suit, actually. Amen. Amen. I like my shoes. But I don't, I don't think they wouldn't go for that. No, I had to wear a certain kind of shoe. I had to wear a certain attire. I got a military man back there. I, I don't care that he holds a gun and shoot at the enemy. He's going to be dressed like they tell him to be dressed. Amen. And they made him cut his hair off and he kept it off. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. No, he probably had a big old fro way out here, you know, back in the day. But uh, but he, hey, you, you, you know, we, you gotta follow protocol, that's right. and that's something we have to do. We can't just do it. I'm, I'm gonna do it my way. They ought to be glad I'm at church. No, you ought to be glad God gave you life another day. That's what you ought to be glad of. Amen. You ought to be glad you ain't hurt like some folks are hurting. You ought to be glad things are well for you as they are. Amen. Amen. We got to get this thing right. Yeah. Glory to God. I'm, I'm thankful to God for your service and all of our military personnel who have served this year. I want us to honor them. Uh, you know, around Memorial Day, that, uh, Veterans Day, let's honor them. They, they put their life on the line so we can enjoy the freedoms we enjoy right now. Amen. 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 So at this time, uh, I'm going to ask you all to come. I'm going to ask the ministers to lead us in this time of prayer. Uh, I want you to cover my wife, my family, and I, as well as uh, you know all.